If you want to use one of these to record into one of these, in this video I'll show you how. If you've never used an audio interface to record into an app like GarageBand or Logic Pro on your iPad before, it can be difficult to know where to start. In this video I'll show how to hook up an audio interface to both Lightning and USB-C iPad models and what you need to do on the software side to get up and running. If you have a 9th gen iPad model or older, or a 5th gen iPad mini or older, or basically any iPad model that you charge via a lightning port, you're going to need one of these. This is the official Apple lightning to USB adapter, or camera connection kit as it's also confusingly known. It has a lightning plug at the end of a short cable, and a USB-A and lightning port at the other end. Yes, you can grab much cheaper third-party clones of this wee gadget from places like eBay or Amazon, but I would definitely recommend against it. Apple are notorious for pushing out regular updates that can make unofficial lightning-based peripherals and cables obsolete, if they work at all. So my advice regarding these adapters is to pay a little bit more and get the real deal from Apple you'll save yourself some headaches further down the line, trust me. First step is to plug the adapter's lightning connection into the lightning port of your iPad. Next, connect your audio interface's USB plug to the adapter's USB port. Here is where you'll probably run into a bit of trouble. Lightning-based iPads don't generate enough juice on their own to power an audio interface. This is where the lightning port on the adapter comes in. By attaching a lightning cable attached to your device's plugged in charger, you're providing enough power for the audio interface to work and record your audio into your chosen iOS app. Note that you will need to use a 20 watt or higher charger to power your attached audio interface, as the 5 watt charging brick that used to come with iPhones, for example, won't provide enough power. Every other model of iPad has a USB-C port, and getting up and running is a much more straightforward process. In fact, if you have an audio interface with a USB-C output, like this one or this one, you can grab a USB-C to USB-C cable, plug it directly into your iPads, and you'll be off to the races. If you'd rather use the standard USB-C to USB cable that manufacturers still insist on bundling their audio interfaces with nowadays, you'll need an adapter of some kind. Unlike Lightning, you have far more choice available when it comes to USB-C adapters, and you don't need to stick to Apple's official gadget. If you want to splash out in your setup, something like this QuizLab magnetic stand and hub offers multiple USB inputs and pass-through charging to keep your iPad's battery topped up while in use. If you'd rather something a little more discreet and wallet-friendly, this Anchor Hub attaches to the side of your iPad and gives you the connectivity you need, as well as a built-in headphone jack. However you get your audio interface connected, USB-C port-equipped iPads output enough power from that port to run it without any extra juice. Just plug it in and you'll be ready to go. However you connect your audio interface to start recording with it in GarageBand, you'll be using the audio recorder or amp. In either the audio recorder or amp, tap the input button with your interface attached. In this menu, you can adjust input gain, add an inter-app audio app, select which of your interface's channels to record from, turn monitoring on or off, and turn the noise gate on or off. When it comes to channels, audio interfaces all work in pretty much the same way. This Audient Evo 4 has two XLR combo inputs, marked 1 and 2. These correspond to channel 1 and 2 inside GarageBand's input menu. 
Inside Logic Pro, the process is much the same, though a little more involved. With your audio interface attached and your Logic Pro project open, tap on the three dots at the top right of the screen and then select Settings. In the Audio tab, the Auto Select Audio Devices option will be toggled on by default. This will automatically select an audio device, like an attached audio interface, and assign it as both the input and output. If you toggle auto select audio devices off, you can manually select from any available inputs. So you could, for example, listen through headphones attached to your audio interface, but record audio through your iPad's built in microphones. Or you could record audio using your audio interface, but listen back to your recordings and your project as a whole through your iPad speakers. There are so many different audio interface options out there nowadays that deciding which one to go for can be quite a difficult decision. For some information on which models I recommend you go for, watch this next.